online. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome. Just a couple of announcements I think that we have. Um, first, I'll remind you that uh, of what's going on in terms of education. Uh, I'll remind you that one, my Sunday school class continues and there's a recording of it that is available to you with our worship materials. Second, that uh, Bob Kaler and Emmy Phelps are doing a, a live uh, class, and that happens at 9 a.m. And if you would like some information about how to join that, it's all in the Piper, but if you'd like uh, some more info, I can certainly give it to you. Um, as I mentioned a second ago, this is Commitment Sunday, and so if you are, um, if you brought your pledge cards with you, wonderful, and we have our Mangochi box that is up here, and um, the way we'll do that uh, is a little bit differently. We'll, uh, we'll pray for those commitments uh, at that time in the service, but uh, what you'll do is, as you're leaving the service today, your uh, tithes and offerings will go here in this uh, tray, and your commitment cards will go into the box um, as you leave. So just to know that's, of course, a little bit different, but that's the way we'll be doing it this year. Um, let's see. Also, we do still have um, um, boxes. Um, help me. Shoe boxes. Shoe boxes are still available, so let me know if you want those. Um, we are trying to make sure we, we have 30 or so, so we want to make sure we uh, clear those, not clear those out, but like have all those taken here um, here this morning or in the next uh, next few days. I think that's all the announcements that I have. Stephen, anything? Okay. Um, my uh, partner in crime, anything? What's, what are you pointing to? Where do you get the cards? Where do you get them? If you haven't gotten them uh, and they haven't been mailed to you, then we'll make sure that they are mailed to you. That's a good question. Um, uh, it was my understanding that we would have had them mailed to you. But if, if we haven't, um, then, then we'll make sure that we, uh, we get them to you. But thank you for that. I'll, I'll make a note of that. Anything else? For, oh. Is there something else you wanted to... Oh, uh, chancel flowers. Yes. So uh, if you are someone who would like to donate chancel flowers, we're doing that now again. And you can contact uh, Kathy Kaler directly. Yes? Okay. If you contact Kathy Kaler directly, either by email or by phone, she can arrange that for you. If you need her information, it, it, it is in the directory. But if you don't have access to a directory, then we'll make sure that we get that information to you as well. Now how am I? Good? All right. Well, then let us begin our time of worship together.
Come, God's people, and pledge yourselves to the Lord. Compel us, O God, to seek your guidance. You call us into worship, and we come before you with praise and thanksgiving. Forgive us, loving God. In our shortcomings, we are called to seek you. When we turn away from your path, show us the way towards righteousness. We call upon you for grace as we search our souls for what is right and pleasing to you. In your mercy, you have brought us safe upon the shore. We stand on solid ground. Open our hearts and minds to your voice. Remind us of the glory of the gospel. We come to worship and praise you. May we not be deterred. Amen. Please be seated. Our first Old Testament reading for this morning comes to us from Psalm 78. Hear now God's word. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. This, my friends, is God's word for us this morning. Thanks be to God. Oh. 
let me read this. Our second reading this morning comes to us from the book of Joshua, this in chapter 24, starting in verse 14. Now therefore, revere the Lord, and serve Him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and along all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples and the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. My friends, these two are God's words for us this morning. Thanks be to God. So if you were to talk to pastors about what weeks of the year are toughest to preach, you'd get a couple of answers. Some might say that the toughest weeks feature passages that we've already been so familiar with. The ones you all know so well. The ones that we've talked about from so many different places. There are just certain lectionary texts that have been heard so many times. And we feel like we know them from every angle. And they're tough because you're trying to think of something new to say. What can I tell people about this passage that they haven't heard before? Is there a fresh fresh kind of perspective that I can offer? Now, sometimes the week is tough because of where it falls in the calendar. There's just certain times that take a little bit extra effort. Like, given all the energy that we put into Holy Week and Christmas Eve, the week after can provide some challenges in terms of just stamina. But then, by then, of course, we're usually just ready for a break. Not only pastors, but the church. But you want those week after sermons to be meaningful too. And so you, you make sure that you put in just as much effort into those as you did in those high holy days before. Then, of course, there's the things that we just simply can't plan for. The things that come out of nowhere. Those national tragedies. The events that happen locally or globally that change everything. And they tend to happen after you've already written the sermon that you plan on preaching that week. And there's a unique responsibility, though, in trying to speak some comforting and prophetic truth into an otherwise chaotic situation. I'm thinking, of course, of situations like we saw at the Tree of Life a couple of years ago. And no matter what we say, we never feel like we're saying enough. We never feel like we're saying all the right words. And all of these happen at at some point, seems like every year. And then there's the week, every four years, after a national election, as the country casts its ballots for the next president. Now this is a unique one. How do you speak to the whole? What can you offer as a a faithful response? And so as I got ready to preach this week, I thought it was interesting that this happened to be 
the lectionary passage for this morning, the story that we see in Joshua. Because in this story for today in Joshua, he is advanced in years and he's weathered by conflict. And he's addressing the entire nation of Israel. He's preparing the people for what is next as they root themselves the best they can in the promised land. They're about to enter into a period in their history that has come to be known as the time of judges. New leaders like Gideon and Deborah and Samson and Samuel would come to lead them eventually. And all of Israel had been through so much. And Joshua takes a moment to remind them of where they've been. From Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to Egypt and Moses. From the wilderness to their new home. The road had been long, and the way had not always been clear. The obstacles that they faced had sometimes brought division and doubt. But God would see them through it all. And so Joshua encourages the people in the next step in their journey, reminding them to continue to serve God in all things. They had relied on God, and the Lord had delivered them. And it was faith in God that held the people together. But they would also need to rely on each other, regardless of the circumstance. So, Joshua decides to throw down the gauntlet. That all would know where he stood. And so he says that famous line, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, Joshua didn't say that as some kind of passive assertion. He said it as a challenge to all of the people. He said it as a rallying cry, encouraging them to keep going, to keep striving. God had loved them and saved them and claimed them. God had cared for their needs, brought them justice, and ensured that this nameless, voiceless people had a place to call their own. And in the new world that they had found themselves in, they all had a responsibility to pursue God as adamantly as God had pursued them. There is a challenge, as I mentioned, in preaching after an election especially one like this. The tough task is that you know that there are people in front of you who are disappointed. And you know that there are people who are also encouraged at the exact same time. And so as I was thinking about what to say about today, I thought about what Joshua was trying to get at as he addressed all of Israel. What did Joshua hope that people would do next? I believe what he wanted the people to remember was that the task of discipleship never ends. That all of us have work to do. And the God who loves us is calling us to keep going. So whether you find yourself as happy or sad about the election... We all have a common goal. And it's the same goal that we had before Tuesday, and it's the same goal that we'll have next Tuesday. We are still called to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. We are still called to feed the poor and care for the orphan and the widow. We are called to protect each other and to serve the welfare of our neighbors and the stranger. We are called to love our enemies and pray for those who oppose us. And we should expect and challenge our elected officials to do the same, whether we've voted to put them in that position or not. 
That's the unifying cry as the people of faith. That we proclaim all of what Jesus stood for. And that we live as he lives. That we lift up all those that he loved and served. Today is Commitment Sunday. The time in our stewardship season where we bring our promises and our hopes for the coming year. And at the end of the service, you'll bring your pledges forward. And before that, we will lift up in prayer the ministry that we are called to together. So my prayer for you and for all of us is that included in this is our continued commitment to serve with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. That we will keep holding others and ourselves accountable to loving each other in extraordinary ways. That we too will be committed to serving the Lord with our heart, our strength, and our mind. So the world may know who Jesus is. May our pursuit of grace and compassion be uncompromising. May it be true today and always. And to God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen. And now we stand together in response to God's word as we use a portion of a brief statement of faith. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and makes everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves. Accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. Please be seated. Now is our time of tithes and offerings. And just as a reminder, of course, you'll leave those tithes and offerings up here on the communion table as you go. And if you're worshiping with us at home, uh, please continue to mail them in. And if you'd like uh, more information on how to do so electronically, please let us know. But let us pray for those tithes and offerings now. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the ways that you lift us up, that you push us forward towards your goals, that you gather us in, give all of us a seat at this table, and remind us what it means to be your children and to be your disciples. We thank you for all good things, for the gifts of time and talent and treasures. Please guide us in wisdom. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I also said that this is a time for us to pray for our commitments. And again, usually we would have you come forward and, and put those commitments in the box. But it'll be here for you after the service is over. So what I'll be doing here this morning instead is that we'll be praying for those commitments. And we'll end that time in the Lord's Prayer. Holy God, this time of the year we recognize your truth. We recognize your compassion and your love for us. You are the one, through Christ our Lord who is our ultimate example of how to be faithful, of how to be truth-tellers, of how to love one another with reckless abandon, how to seek out the orphan and the widow and the stranger. And we are committed to you. 
We are committed to your faith. And you stir up in us, through your Spirit, a way of continuing your work in the world. We thank you and praise you for all the ways that you have shown us what is good and what the Lord requires of us. We thank you for the commitments of this congregation. We thank you for the work of your church. And we pray that we would continue with faithful service. We thank you for each and every person who is committed to this place. And especially in this year that has been a unique type of struggle. We thank you that you have kept us together. We thank you that you have kept us moving. That you have shown us what we are capable of. And we pray for what is next. So as we lay these commitments before you, we are reminded of all that your Son has done and is and will always be. And so we pray now the prayer that you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, before I give the benediction, just let me remind you of a few things. First, let me encourage you in all ways that you can to be connected with one another. As we move forward in worship, uh, both online and here in person, uh, we are still continuing to look for ways that we can be connective. If you can join our Bible studies in, on Sunday morning, uh, we would love for you to do that. I'm still continuing to do coffee with Ben, and so I encourage you to come online and chat with us if you'd like. But there are many other ways to do that. And if you have good ideas about that, then please let me know. Second, I always try to remind you of the work of our Stephen ministers. They are here for you in whatever way and capacity they can be. Some of them are here this morning. But especially this morning, um, what I have found in uh, the short years I've been doing uh, pastoral ministry is that elections can bring forward um, for people personally a specific type of stress 
um, regardless of the outcome, they are, are still stressful things. Um, sometimes because of what's happening, sometimes because um, families don't always agree, uh, spouses don't always agree, uh, and that can be a difficult thing. And so um, I have done this in the past, and so I, I wanted to offer it now. If anyone who is here, uh, either virtually or in person, uh, would like to set up a time just to talk about that. Uh, maybe it's about COVID, maybe it's about other things, uh, maybe it's about the election. But if you'd like a, a time just to um, have a, a safe space to be where you can talk and, and think about um, what this time has been like, uh, I know I, I speak for uh, Reverend Steph when I say we are here for that in whatever capacity that you need. Uh, and so I just wanted to offer that to, to everyone here um, to let you know that, that we're here um, for those stressful moments in life. We know that also the holidays are coming forward, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And we know that those are stressful times as well, even without a global pandemic. But especially now that um, we know that this year is going to be different. And so we want to offer um, personal pastoral care um, with us, with Stephen Ministers, in whatever capacity, again, might be helpful to you. Um, we're working on uh, doing the best we can in that capacity, and we'd like to continue. So if that's you right now, we'd, we'd love to talk with you. My friends... I know that this church has always been committed to serving God in all the ways that it has. Between the mission projects that we have, between the ways that we connect with each other in fellowship, from our worship and everything else, we are those who strive to serve God in the best ways we can. Whether we are youth or whether we have been a, a part of this con congregation for a long time. Whether we are new to it, whether we have, uh, in whatever capacity, we have known this congregation, that is our commitment. We thank you for the ways that you have done that. And we are blessed to be those who, as we move forward as a nation, as we move forward as a congregation, that we are those who can do that together. We are those who can rely on each other for hope and peace, compassion, and love. But even as we look towards each other or we look towards our families for that support and care, we know that even in that, we are not alone. Because we strive to do all of those things with the love and grace of the one who creates us and redeems us and sustains us now and always. Amen.